Hello and welcome to this taste challenge. Uh, this is a late morning challenge. It's brandy and this is going to close out brandy for a few months for sure. I did rum and that was very good. That, that went very well. And so this will be for Friday's taste challenge. I'm not going to feel like it Friday tomorrow. I was trying to decide if I was going to do this or record a solo review of an upcoming whiskey, but bourbon whiskey, but I said, no, nah, <clears throat> that would be Monday slot. And uh, I was thinking about it and I said, well, Sunday, I'll probably be watching baseball games during the day. And then I could find some time in between, like if one got rained out or was boring to watch, you know, I could do a solo review and solo re reviews don't usually take very long. Um, and then I'm going to put that bourbon which we've already done a duo review of it, so you can watch our duo review into a bunch of taste challenges. Uh, now, um, and that'll start sometime next week. I have some rye whiskey taste ch challenges coming up after bourbon is closed. <laughs> after brandy's closed out, I have um, Jack Daniels Rye, which I've also done a, a duo review, already posted, and I have a solo review that I recorded, but I haven't posted it yet. So backlogged on posts on recorded videos, which is probably good because it gives me a lot of uh, material I have to use. Um, so I'll do the two rye. There's only going to be two rye whiskey taste challenges because I don't have a lot of it yet. I'll do the Jack Daniels rye versus Woodford Reserve rye <clears throat> and then George Dickel rye in a few months, maybe even this year. Could could be doubtful on that. Bring in this old, old I have trouble saying it, old Overholt rye. It's one of the really old brands, old Overholt. It is old. There is an old Overholt 100 proof, not listed on the website. That's no surprise. That's kind of a typical thing from what I've found out over the years. Don't know if I'm going to bring in a hundred proof rye. That's getting a little high. Although on the other hand, I'm kind of interested to see what it tastes like. But anyway, I don't really getting above 90 proof is I don't enjoy, enjoy them too much, but it, it, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Sazerac rye. I've, <laughs> I used that whole bottle up, you know, I drank it before I, um, decided to do taste challenges. That was years ago. So I got to think if I'm going to repurchase Sazerac rye, I doubt it. There's so many out there anyway. It's not like I'm going to run short. There's Crown Royal rye, uh, Canadian club, hundred percent rye. So that, 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 and then on and on and on and on and on doesn't run out. So that's not going to be an issue really. You could never review them all anyway, or taste challenge them all. Uh, so then the bourbon, uh, you want me to show you what the bourbon is coming up? I'll show you. It's a Cascade Hollow, George Dickel's Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey, Old Fashioned Cascade Hollow. And uh, it's the red label. It's no longer being bottled. This liter bottle, liter bottle. We'll talk about that later, how much I got it for. It was so cheap. It's crazy. Craziness. This harkens back to the the pre 1960s. Yeah, age three years. Um, not really. Well, two years be the minimum. Um, we'll get to that later. But that was pretty interesting when I saw that at D Discount Depot. I said, "Whoa!" For the price I got it, you 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 know as well as I do that those twenty or thirty six bottles, however many they had, didn't last very long. Next time I went back, it was out. Uh, even though it's only a three-year age, I'm very pleased with it. And that product, it's something strange on their website, the way they termed it. It's, it's not listed under their bourbons. It says, uh, I'm sorry, they're Tennessee whiskeys. <laughs> it is a bourbon, but uh, they call it Tennessee whiskey. They say, um, under FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, they say, where can I, you know, the question, where can I get a bottle of Cascade Hollow? And then the answer, Cascade Hollow is not currently being bottled. 
You notice that not currently being bottled. It didn't say not currently being aged or being produced. So it makes you wonder. Uh, it just makes you wonder. Anyway, they could have just said it's out of production. Clean, clear cut statement. But they didn't say it like that. They said not currently being bottled. May not be as may not be as gone as we think. Well, anyway, back to brandy. This will be the last brandy taste challenge, like I said, for a good while. The next one I'm planning to get is going to be either Raynal, French brandy, the BSOP, or more likely the Cerami XO. I know I can get that at Dorgnax. Same place I bought the Corbel. Now, Corbel is not a popular brandy in Louisiana. In fact, I can't get it in this town. And I've only seen it at one place. And that's Dorgnax. Uh, my understanding is that it's very popular. Well, I've read things about it. I have nothing definitive, but I read that it's very popular in Wisconsin. And it may well be. I did buy the XS one time, a small bottle, a half size bottle of XS, the spiced brandy. And that was very nice. That was in a kind of it's obscure convenience store, which is no longer open. The man sold it. From what I heard, they're going to build a Chick-fil-A there. <laughs> uh, but it was only a couple of bottles there. All right. Now, the competitor is Brandy St. Louise. Another obscure one. I doubt you'll see it. But you might. I bought it at Savannah Discount. Normally 27 bucks, But that, I got it there for 21 so instead of paying $27.99, I guess that's what it was, $21.99. So $21 instead of $28. Nice, good discount. Corbell, $14.99 for the liter. All right. Hey, $14.99 for a full liter. That's a bargain. No age statement. Uh, got this little uh, plastic cap cover. It's one of those fl flim flam, you know, uh, rubberized corks, not real cork, but rubber. Another thing you'll notice from Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman bought Corbell a long time ago. Oh, it's tight. Wow. Uh, you notice most Brown Foreman products don't have an age statement. I don't know why. They don't put, they say, well, uh, we age to taste. When I was on the Jack Daniels tour, the tour guide said, we don't age, we don't put age statement because there's a tax you got to pay. He was like, if you go above four years, got to pay some extra tax. I don't I didn't really understand what he meant. He said, but if you don't put an age statement, you don't have to pay it. So I think what they're saying with Jack Daniels, it's age at least four years, but we're not saying that on the bottle. After four years, we taste it. And if it's appropriate, we bottle it, the various barrels that they're aging. So it's a it's kind of a backdoor way of saying it's aged four years because you know they're not waiting much longer. But anyway, I don't even care. Now the the, the Corbell, no, nah, there's no age statement. I think somewhere if you go reading through their website for an hour, <laughs> which I'm not gonna do, you can find out where they talk about a minimum eight, like it's a blend of different ages. There's a Corbell uh Headquarters of, over there in California where they rent it out for, um, oh, well, you know, like conferences or whatever. Very expensive. All right. So it's distilled in one town in California, but it's blended and bottled in another town in California. All right. So one of the really old brands from the 1880s. This is a new one. It's got a foil cap. Try not to damage that. Been on the market two years. Riku Spirits is the owner. And um, from what I could tell, it didn't look like Riku Spirits has any other brands. It's like, this is their brand to, for now. Maybe they'll uh, expand. I don't know. It's a blend of, of brandy. Three-year age, the youngest. And 10 years is the oldest. Three to 10-year age. Three to 10-year old brandies but they don't put an official age statement because if they did they'd have to call it three year old and they don't want to do that so they just call it brandy <laughs> same thing with the uh corbell you know the corbell might have a one-year-old age mixed in there blended in they're not gonna 
go with an age statement because they'd have to call it a one year aged. And that's, that doesn't look too good for marketing. Um, now, I got a little confused because this morning for Dawn Busters, I was going up against Martell Blue Swift, 80 proof, finished in American bourbon barrels, used bourbon barrels. Now, I don't know who's, bar who's bourbon barrels. I don't know. It probably doesn't matter because it's used and that's going to suck out a lot of the flavor and color. So they're probably adding color, but they claim it made it taste better. Well, it does taste a little better than the VS because the VS is about two year old and the VSOP, you use those are running about four years. That's the guidelines. VSOP be about four years. And their brand new St. Louis is like I say, between a VS and an XO. On the low end, it's VS. On the high end, it's XO brandy, which used to be about six years, but they're saying up to 10, 10 years. All right. I thought the proof was going to give it away in this morning's taste challenge. I thought that the <clears throat> Brandy St. Louis being 86 proof would overshadow the 80 proof, not necessarily have a better flavor, but you would, you would be able to pick up that alcohol burn, maybe give it more body, but no, I couldn't pick that up and I couldn't really tell the difference. Uh, to me, they were basically the same. Not so much the same flavor, but kind of like just like the same quality level. They were both smooth, spicy, had some flower nectar, you know, like, well, nectar, um, floral thing going. And um, the Blue Swift is priced about the same as the uh, Brandy St. Louis. So I just say it's a draw. I couldn't decide which one would taste better. It was an even thing. And then I couldn't tell them apart. I checked. I said, oh. It was the Brandy St. Louis, and I thought it was the um, the Blue Swift from Martel Cognac. So it just goes to show you, either I don't know what I'm doing, which is a possibility, or uh, they're just close, and it's hard to tell them apart. We don't know because there's not a whole lot of people on YouTube doing taste challenges, So, and especially for Brandy. So there's not a whole lot of um, rep replication. Now, if you had 20 different video reviewers and they're all doing blind taste tests, you start establishing something like, ah, they're noticing the same thing. Like with beer reviews, I'll do a beer and I'll say, well, it's really lemony, you know. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I don't know. But, but then I'll start reading the written reviews. And it might be, you know, 12 written reviews on Beer Advocate. Heck, nine might mention a lemony aspect. It's lemony, I'll say, well, I must have not been far off because I didn't read them ahead of time. I don't do that. I don't read the reviews before I do the review. I don't want to be influenced. I don't watch any video reviews also either. I go in cold. I mean, I'll research the product, but I'll go in cold. And um, reading the tasting notes doesn't matter because I never can remember them. You know, I, I never remember. They always be like, oh, baked apple and pears and pomegranate. And they go on and on. And it's like, how can this product have all these things, you know? And I never can remember, so that doesn't influence me. So here we go. Ah, about the same shade, just a standard amber, which I suppose if you're looking at crayons, it'd be what, tan? You call that tan, light brown, tan? So I don't have to close my eyes because I'm glancing at it. Won't give the now the blue swift was much lighter. See, so it was a light amber. No, got it backwards. The blue swift was a dark amber. I'm sorry, chestnut, much darker brown. And then Brenda Saint Louis was lighter. So I had to close my eyes. If I glanced, I'd know. But in this case, I won't. They're the same. It's like if you're doing past blue ribbon in um, old Milwaukee, something like that. And I'll always be like that straw yellow. You don't have to worry about it. The thing you got to worry about is the lacing. Some of those uh, macro mass produced lager beers, adjunct lagers, will have heavy lacing and a big thick head of foam. Others won't. Like the, the foam will dissipate rather quickly and they have no lacing. So you're looking at one, it's got all this lacing on the side of the glass, like middle of high life tends to have. 
And then, of course, think would be no lacing. You're thinking, oh, there, you know, as soon as you look, there it is. So you have to close your eyes on those because you just ruin the whole challenge. You look down, you know what it is. So the purpose of the blind taste test is so you don't know which is which. So you're not biased either consciously or unconsciously, subconsciously. And the subconscious bias can really come into play. And you know, you think it won't. It really can. Okay, so cheers to you. And here we go. Well, it's typical. It smells like Corbell, though. I'm going to tell you why. Now, it says since 1889, our Sonoma County Winery has been producing award winning brandy. And they go on and on, handcrafted. It's masterfully aged. It's the same thing you read on all these liquor sites about how fabulous it is. Of course, they're going to want to promote their product. Golden amber color, rich butterscotch aroma. An extra smooth taste. See, I'm getting that kind of butterscotch. I was going to say caramel, but it is sort of butterscotch, like those gold plastic kind of foil-like wrapped butterscotch candies. What, who makes that? Brock's or somebody like that? Smells kind of like that. Now, there's some higher grades, yeah, for, for this company. Two-time gold medal winner. Yeah, I believe that. There's a VSOP. It's going to cost more than $14.99 a liter. I know that much. There's the excess. Excess. Get it? Excessive. XS. That can stand for extra spiced or excessive. You know what I'm saying? So I saw that once. And I bought it and I liked it. There's the 12 year age. It's in a different type bottle, a very expensive looking bottle. You're probably looking at $50, $60 for that. The 18 year age. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to hit you a lot harder on price. French aged Alambic, Alambic brandy blend. Oh, you're going to go on in all these details. Then there's the 25 year aged. Uh, well, <laughs> You better get ready because you're going to be paying for that. In my case, it doesn't matter. I can't get them. I've only seen the regular standard here. Yes. Okay, let's go over here. What brandies do we get around this town? Well, Cognacs, of course. The Saint Remy, the Ciroc, Ciroc VS Cognac. We get the. You know, Corvassier, and uh, if I go to Dornax, I can get Corvassier VSOP. And we get um, Mar Martel, naturally Hennessy. In this town, really Hennessy VS only, but uh, no, I think Mar I think Mathern's does have Hennessy black, but only in the half size bottle. I don't know if any other people that sell the black or the privilege. Miko, M E O, -K I don't know how to pronounce that. Miko or whatever. It looks like a cat, like a like some kind of tiger or something on there. We get that. Oh well, a lot. And then American brandies we get around here. Your typical thing, Hartley, the low, the lowest of the low grades, I guess, for this town. <laughs> Sells though. Um, you know what we get? Paul Masson. Everybody gets that. E and J V S and their their different grades. Everybody gets that. Everybody gets Christian Brothers. Go to door next, you can get the Christian Brothers Sacred Bond. So it's a lot. I mean, I'm thinking like it's not a lot. I'm saying it's not a lot, but then I'm thinking, well, maybe it's way more than I realized. But compared to whiskey, it's not a lot. I mean, the whiskey varieties would be mind boggling. Of course, that's a much more popular type of liquor. Uh, in Louisiana. And if you went to uh, Thailand or Burma, Myanmar, it'd be reversed. Brandy's like really big out there. China. I think that's where most of the Kanye goes. Corvassier in you know, China, Taiwan, which is part of China, the, the non-communist part, um, Philippines. I think 
it would be way more varieties of each of those that we get here. Okay, the aroma is so different. This one is that butterscotch I was talking about. Yeah, I know I read the Corbell site, but I was thinking that already. And what, what did I say? I said, it's not like Corbell. It's just a strong butterscotch. Yeah, there's wood. Yeah, there's spice. Yeah, there's nectar. Yeah, there's um, maybe grapes. <laughs> it's made from grapes, but the flavor compared to grapes be far removed, in my opinion, with brandy. Like, you know it's made from grapes because you know it. You know what I'm saying? You're, you, you read about it. You educated yourself. But if you just smelled brandy on its own and didn't know what it was made from, I'm not so sure you would say grapes, that it's a wine product, a distilled wine. It's what they use. You might not ever guess. To, to, to me, it doesn't have that character. You say, well, it's distilled, all right? So it sort of like turns it into a different product, a spirit from distillation. Yes. Chip Diamond says, do you think, oh, do I drink to get drunk or drink for taste? Uh, for taste. Getting drunk is not my bag. I just don't like it. And I like to taste these things. It's fun. It's like a hobby. It is a hobby, but to say, uh, oh yeah, woo, getting wild. And the next day, oh, feel terrible. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, do I know some people online that do that? Yeah, obviously, because I read their comments the next morning and when I wake up really early and it's like, yo, I feel so bad. And then and and then they'll be like, you were really going wild last night, you know? And, and I'm thinking, I'm glad I'm not part of that. Because when they're shutting down is when I'm waking up, usually they're, they might be on there for hours just going on and on watching. So we were watching a hockey game and we were all drinking and but I know I read their comments the next morning and they're all talking about how they feel so bad. I'm never doing this again until the next time, I guess they mean. Because they'll be at it, they'll be at it again. Like this Friday. Up all hours. <laughs> Sometimes they get in a big fight. I'll read I just read like mostly. I barely make comments. I might say, oh, that food looks good, something like that. If they post a food photo, like Mexican food the other day. But just to read the comments is funny, you know, and sometimes, like I said, they'd be in a fight. Hey, screw you. You know, come to my house and tell me that you're out of this group. And they'll kick them out and it'd be a big uproar. And then later, oh, it's all it's OK, dude. You know, it's like, I'm sorry I got so angry <laughs> and they'll let them back in. And they'll be ripping and roaring the next weekend. I, I just can't get over that. It's funny when I think I can't stop until I pass out or sure. I wouldn't drink at all if I was doing that. If I was drinking to excess every day and getting sick and passing out, I wouldn't drink. I'd find some other hobby like collecting baseball cards or something or doing like somebody that used to do beer reviews. He goes to the airport, looks at planes land. Um, to me, that's a bizarre hobby. And that's what he does. One guy looks at trains. You put that on Facebook link. I saw this uh, Kansas City Southern and say like this engine hasn't been, this engine was introduced in 1991 or something. It's a strange hobby. I don't understand it, but I'll post photos of cars, but that's just, you know, car designs, trucks, they're kind of interesting. Rehab is my hobby, yeah. Okay, all right, well, anyway. Um, this one here is spicier. Um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Just spice. Like think of like a minty spice or a nutmeg, even cinnamon. It's none of those things, but it's somewhat like that. And I think the Brandy St. Louis has that spiciness. French brandies will, will have that spiciness. I don't know what it comes from. I don't think they're allowed to add spices. I could be wrong. Uh, well, I know the Hartley's got flavors added. It says it on the bottle with natural flavors added, and they are very strange. <laughs> It'll say, um, 
if you read the sell sheet for Hartley, it's like we use Italian brandy. It doesn't say it is Italian brandy. It says we use Italian brandy. It used to say it was Italian brandy. I think they got in trouble with the Tax and Trade Bureau. Because if it says Italian brandy, it has to be from Italy. It can't just be a brandy with, that's used in Italian. All right? Like this, this doesn't say with French brandy. It says French brandy, definitive. That means the brandy got to be from France. So it can't just be blended in. But the Hartley, they'll add, you know, the Hartley probably has no flavor hardly. That's, what I think, the issue there. And the flavors it does have probably are not too good. I see it on sale all the time, $7.99, you know. Um, and then they'll mask it with apple, Hartley apple flavor, peach, passion fruit, whatever, on and on. It goes on and on. There's so many different flavors. Seem to, they seem to rotate them in and out. And I think they add some kind of flavor that gives it that, what they call it, drizzled rum cake. Yeah, rum cake. It tastes remarkably identical to D.W. Anders, which is an Albertsons, Jewel Osco, Safeway, Super Value, Amigos, etc., USA Grocery, etc. brand. It's coming from, you guessed it, Kentucky, from, you guessed it, Sazerac. You say it's just a rebadge. It's like those Buicks that were really Chevy Novas and they put a different badging on it. What do they call it? Omega? Same thing. Um, it's got to be. Go get great value coffee and then drink similar grades of Folgers. You start to say, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, well, I think that's the difference here. I really think the key to the riddle is I'm not noticing, once again, not noticing a huge Daryl Macias, good morning. Good morning back to you. Good morning back to you. I'm not noticing a big proof difference. Huh. Yeah, but on second thought, maybe I am. I think the one in my right hand has got a little more burn to it, a little more body. Maybe I wasn't thinking along strong enough along those lines this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the Brandy of St. Louis. And I think you, there's no getting around this Corbell, the Corbell with the um, butterscotch. It's got to be it. It's got to be. It's got to be. So... Now, which one tastes better? Uh, now, if it's close, then it's a, a winner. Because if the Corbell is close to the Brandy of St. Louis, then the Corbell is a winner by virtue of being so much cheaper. $14.99 for a liter versus $26, $27.99 for a $7.50. I'll go with the Corbell every day of the week. And actually, I'm not noticing really any quality differences. Now, if you get the Palmasan VS, the E and J VS, or the Christian Brothers VS, I think you'd notice. Because those can just have like a young, it's it's hard to describe, but it's like a sharp kind of, I don't want to say edgy flavor. It's like a, yeah, kind of harsh flavor. It's kind of bitey. That's the word my friend David would say, bitey. It's like a little ragged. That That's it. Yeah, E and J be a little ragged, which is why most people use it as a mixer. They'll make hot toddies with it and things like that. Say, oh, I got a sore throat. Oh, darling, let me make you a hot toddy. Then, you know, they're not sitting there drinking it like and doing taste tests with it. But I do think the uh, E and J BS uh, XO, the XO for sure, might even beat these two. I can get that $14.99. 750, you know, but it, it could, it could, it could battle these, the, but the VSOP be, it, I don't know, uh, uh, that'd be questionable. Palmasan VSOP, questionable, but very good products.
got to be. It's got to be Corbell. I don't think – I don't recall drinking any other brandies that had that uh, strong butterscotch flavor. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Could they add flavor into it? I guess they could do – I don't think that's forbidden by the Tax and Trade Bureau. If you read the U.S. government regulations, I don't think it's forbidden. I didn't say it was encouraged. But I don't think it's forbidden. Now, with, with bourbon, forget it. You cannot add flavor into bourbon or coloring. Whatever color you see, that's the color it came out the barrel and developed through aging or, you know, whatever aging in the barrel and then they blend it and bottle it. The flavor you got for bourbon, that's coming from the barrel and the product. That's it. If it tastes bad, well, it's just bad. It's not flavoring. That's the only one type of bourbon allows flavoring and that's blended bourbon. You say blended, what is that? Well, it, read up on it, tax and trade bureau, ttb.gov. Gov. Well, blended bourbon is, is a minimum 51% straight bourbon. 51% straight. But then the other 49%, oh, that's where things get dicey. <laughs> could be grain spirits, could be who knows what. I'm not saying dangerous things like unhealthy, just questionable. Uh, there's the 10 high bourbon at Walmart, the Eagle uh, one. Now, the one with the man standing on it, Hiram Walker with his foot on a barrel, that's the blended. 51% straight bourbon and 49% grain neutral spirits. It's called blended bourbon. They can add flavoring and they can add coloring. All right. You say, well, that seems pretty dang questionable. Yeah, well, that's why it's pretty dang cheap. But there's another, uh, uh, another tin high and it's got the eagle on it. Look like some kind of government insignia, but it's an eagle. Someone told me that's the straight bourbon. Well, it isn't straight bourbon. I checked the label very carefully. I went to one store and they had both on the shelf in the same spot. Like they thought it was the same thing. Most customers probably would think so. It doesn't say straight bourbon. Go look at the label. I looked at it at Walmart the other day, the big plastic handle bottle. It says bourbon, which to me is a mislabel. I think they're going to catch some heat if anybody reports them. I wouldn't because I don't care. But I think it's going to, it says bourbon with flavor, natural flavors added. We're not allowed to have bourbon with natural flavors added. I think they're going to have to change the label to blended bourbon with natural flavors. That's allowed. But to, just to say bourbon with natural flavors added, even if you make that qualifying statement, I don't think they're allowed to do that. I think they're violating the guidelines. I think it really is. I don't know this for sure. Well, honestly, I don't know what it is. but Because I know if you look on the Tax and Trade Bureau website, it clearly states bourbon cannot have coloring or flavor added. But there it is on the shelf of Walmart. It says bourbon with flavors and colorings added. Uh, uh, flavor, natural flavors added. So I'd like somebody to explain that to me. Because I don't know the answer. Mm. Well, with these two, I think maybe, probably, the Brandy San Luis is a little more developed, a little nicer, a little smoother. It is longer aged. Um, but is it worth the extra money? You pay an extra $10 to get or more, $13 to get 25% less? Is it really worth paying $13 more to get 25% less? I don't see it. It's marginally better, and it maybe is objectively better if there's such a thing. You can't really say that with taste. There's no such thing. It's all subjective, but I would say that Corbell's the winner by default, even if I can't tell them apart. If I check the label and I'm wrong, that would reinforce it because that means that I, I can even tell them apart. And it's much cheaper. So I think, to summarize this, Corbell wins by virtue of the price point. You pay so much less money, but your quality isn't dropping much. Now, Brandy St. Louis, they make a big discussion on their website about how it's so carefully crafted. They went through all this trouble to get. They went through all these protocols. They interviewed 
all these bartenders and they really worked hard to develop it. And I'm not, and I'm not saying they didn't. And I think they did a good job and I think it's worth buying. But on the other hand, you can still get pretty good stuff a lot cheaper. That's the that's the story on it. So here we go. I'm going to check if it says, uh, you know, um, B B S L S L Brandy St. Louis. If it says B S L, I'm wrong. Ah, but it doesn't. Ha! I got it. I feel pretty good now because I got I did three taste challenges and I got it two thirds right. I don't think that's too bad because um, there's only three challenges. Um, they're not that wildly different one from another anyway. And they're all quality and uh, that's it. So do I plan to bring in more cognacs and more cognac, you know, more cognac brandies and more brandies? Yeah, sure. Those little Martell bottles aren't going to last, but uh, oh, well, no big deal. I'm bringing a lot more over the next few years. So it doesn't matter. So Brandy St. Louis, final assessment. Very good product, worth the money. I may have paid $27.99, but that doesn't matter because I got it for $20.99 at Savannah Discount. So I got a great discount. Next time I go over there, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I, I really want to make a, a, a dedication to buy the Ciroc. The uh, Ciroc brandy. That's kind of a new product because Ciroc is famous for what? You know, French vodka. That's like their thing. Vodka, 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 vodka. Flavor vodka. Every type of flavor vodka you ever thought about. Ciroc. But um, I want to bring in the VS brandy and I want to bring in the Raynal, Raynal, VSOP, I believe it's called. And I, I want to bring in the uh, Saint Remy. XO, those are the three I'm really focusing on coming up. Those should be very exciting taste challenges. We'll slowly filter out the uh, Martell. Would I be open to buying big bottle, you know, normal size bottles of Martell? Certainly, of course I would. Definitely, without any hesitation. Uh, been steering away from those private labels like Trader Joe's, Straight Kentucky Bourbon, you know, or these all these myriad private labels from uh, Total Wine and More. There's just too many name brands to tackle. And I don't think the private labels are bad or not worth buying. I just don't think there's a lot of interest from viewers in it. Like people that watch this channel, are, um, they don't want to hear about it. And I kind of understand that. And I actually pretty much agree with that. Could you make a channel dedicated to private label beer, wine, and liquor? Yeah, you could. Would it get a pretty decent following? I think so. Some people are really into that. And I think it would be worth doing that. But I, on this channel, I'm really more interested in sticking with the name brands just because I'm interested in those. And it's interesting to read the history about them, how the company started and uh, where they sell it and read the sell sheets. And that's just my area. It's, it's not a knock against private label. That has a role. There's definitely a role there, a purpose for it. Hi, Ron, says Maxwell. Hello to you, Maxwell, in the Russian Federation. Well, you caught me at the end. I'm closing it out. It's been going on over 30 minutes, too long anyway. Uh, one more thing. We did StreamYard last night, beers to pair with seafood. Normally, we do Wild Card Wednesday. Some people watching the video said that the video kept stopping, buffering, having blackouts and freeze-ups. I said, I think it's a StreamYard issue because we were watching it live on our end. It was smooth. It was none of that that we could see from watching it live. Other people watching it live say it's not like that on my end. I'm looking at it smooth. It's just some viewers say it was all jammed up and everything. I say, well, I don't know. This morning when I saw it come up on my archives, I started watching it. Clear, smooth, no freeze ups. The audio was in sync with the video and there were no blackouts. So once again, I think it was a StreamYard issue. What else could it be? The playback was perfect. Uh, if that happens in the future, I would just advise the viewers. I say, look, just don't watch the video live. Wait till it goes posted 
and you could watch the playback, then you won't have all the blackouts and the jam ups and you could just make comments down in the comment section and I'll respond to them. I don't know what else to do. I can't control StreamYard. All right, thanks y'all. So that's it. And uh, next week we're gonna do rye, which I'm very excited about. Uh, excited about the Dickel rye, the Woodford Reserve rye and the Jack Daniels rye. What a great battle. That's gonna be a great battle, great battle. My feeling is that well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's going to win. It's going to be exciting. Then we're going to pivot into bourbon or well, Tennessee whiskey. But, you know, it is bourbon. But it's um, George Dickel Tennessee whiskey sour mash from Diageo. And who bought George Dickel? And it's going to battle all the other bourbons I have, including Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey, you know, sour mash. So I think that's going to be an exciting, exciting series. Uh, I know some people are going to say it's not bourbon because it's charcoal filtered. Believe me, charcoal filtering is totally irrelevant to bourbon. A bourbon does not become or not become a bourbon based on charcoal filtering. Doesn't matter whatsoever. Read the guidelines. The filtering method is totally irrelevant to the classification of bourbon. That is an absolute fact. Like William Kepley said, I deal in facts. <laughs> I said, that's a good statement to make. All right. Thanks, y'all.